All right. Since we're kind of like shut down in this uh, Corona shutdown crap, we'll go ahead and do a radio. Well, it's a nice old uh, Crossley 52. Um, it's a regenerative set. Um, this one, I, I got it for, I think I paid $25 for it or something like that at a, at a uh, store. Nobody knew what it was. Um, it's in excellent condition. Uh, I don't know electronically what it is, but the cabinet's beautiful. I won't won't have to do any re refinishing on the cabinet. Um, inside, it's nice and clean. Standard Crossley Transformers, three tube regenerative. Got the uh, <laughs> you see that interesting regenerator. I'll take it all apart here in a minute. Okay, we're going to go ahead and completely restore this, make it beautiful. Um, Okay, and uh, it, it, there was even inside of it an original advertisement. This thing is a real one. This is not a copy. The copies are available all over the internet, but this one's a real one. It's in bad shape, and um, what I'll do is I'll get that plastic laminating sheet, and we'll laminate it and keep it. It's an original advertising sheet for it. Interesting. Okay, first thing we got to do... Uh, Let's get the get the thing out of there. Okay, these screws. Well, we can polish them up, I guess. They're. I don't know, I'll probably use nice brand new brass ones, but this stuff I gotta keep the hardware. The screws are rusted up pretty bad here. This just lifts out. Okay, we've got two more screws in here. Now, okay. And we'll put the cabinet out of the way for the time being. Okay, here we have the radio. You can see how neat this is. It has a spiral groove in this rod. And when you turn that thing, the regeneration coil moves in and out. <laughs> I mean to say, back in those old days, they just uh, they, they just made all kinds of crazy stuff like that. Hey, it works. Okay, first thing we're going to do, uh, we're going to base these transformers and see how many of them we have to rebuild. Okay, got the meter over here. I'll meet it. You don't need to look at the meter. I'll tell you if it's good or bad. Okay. Um, whew, continuity. Oh, yeah. This one's got continuity on both windings. Okay. Now here. Can I get to it? Oh, good. Well, I'll be darned. Both of them are good. Both transformers have continuity. <laughs> okay. Now, here we have our grid leak. we got to test that. i got to go to high scale. See what that reads. Good. Two and a half megs. That's good. All right. Now, let's look at our condenser here. This is usually fairly good. Okay, we have no touching. See, if these plates get warped, they'll touch and make everything not work. All right, everything looks good in it. All right, uh, let me go up in the attic and get some tubes. We'll need 301A tubes. All right, let's see. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to reach down inside here, and I'm going to scrape each of these terminals. I, I, you know, they, they have to be nice and clean. They're not bad. They, they're not bad. They're not corroded or anything. It would be really interesting if we just turn this thing on and it works. <laughs> there are gold plating kits on eBay. It's a little pen that you plate 
with gold. You just take it and um, connect the wires and you just take it and rub it on it and it'll put gold plating on something. Very, very thin, but it doesn't take much to go ahead and stop it from corroding. They're outrageously priced for what they are. I mean, the amount of gold in there is, is a few dollars and they'll charge you $30 for the little pen. But um, you can, even, even for that few dollars um, worth of gold in there, you can get enough on the, the, the contacts because you're only putting it right where the pin touches. And that, that makes the thing a lot more reliable. I think that they also have got ones that plate silver, and they would be a lot cheaper, and it's just as good. The silver will tarnish, but tarnish doesn't, um, doesn't hurt the contacting. The, the tarnish is real soft, and the slightest contact uh, from the uh, tube pin will um, break through the tarnish and, and make good contact. The main thing is to have that silver plating on there to supply the uh, connection. Okay, this looks real good. Okay. Now, for the audio output, I've got a 112, type 112. Okay, that has a little bit better um, output uh, power than the uh, 01A. And we'll just use that for the output. Okay, that feels good. All right, then we have O1A. It's T means tested. <laughs> okay. And see, I want to look at these bottoms, make sure they look good. See, these make contact right on the bottom. They're, they're not the good type. The, the good sockets have wipers that scrape on the side of the pin. That, that's what you want. But these old radios. They just press down in there, and this just touches on the on the brass connection, and uh, that means everything on the bottom has to be very uh, shiny. You get that old black lead oxide on there that is from the solder oxidizing, and it uh, it'd be intermittent, won't work very well. Now, this one has another problem. If you look carefully, I don't know if it'll show up in the camera or not. You see how it has a, a little spot there? That's the solder, not contacting good on the wire that's down inside that pin. So we're going to re-solder that pin to make sure. Sometimes you buy these tubes and it won't work. And the only problem will be is that's that wire up inside that pin has come unsoldered. And back in those old days, I mean, that soldering was, whoo, some people did real good, some people didn't. All right. See, that made that solder go up inside that pin and really grab that wire good. I got the tube tester right over there. I could go test the tubes, but uh, it's just as quick to go ahead and put them in the radio and, and see if they work. If they work okay in the radio, then it's, it's done. Okay, this one's got all kinds of connections here. We've got our antenna and ground. Okay, we'll need connections to that. Now, all of my stuff has got alligator clips on it, so I'm going to make little pieces of wire to stick in here to where we can clip onto them. This is just some um, old field coil wire here I'm going to use. And we just stick some of this in each hole. See, we clip our alligator clips on there. C minus here. That's for our audio output tube. And here we have our. Um, our output tube power. That's that's the um, for, for our, our speaker. We can run that anywhere from 45 up to 135 volts, depending on on the tube we have and the speaker. Boy, that sure doesn't. 
this is one of those ones where the uh, the little thread on there isn't enough. It doesn't grab that wire. It's made to, to grab the old-fashioned wire they had back in the old days. They used, you know, instead of number 22 like I'm using, they used like number 16, big old heavy wire. I've got some around somewhere. We'll just use this. Ah, oh, yeah. The rest of these did okay. Okay, and then here's our speaker connection. Okay, I don't need to put any in there because the speaker has got um, pins already on it. Let me get the speaker. Okay, this is the speaker we're going to be using. It's just one of the Radiola or, or RCA uh, Radiola speakers. High impedance horn speaker. Alright, and we stick our pins into here. This particular model of speaker, it doesn't matter which pin goes where. On some of them it matters, but on the Radiola one, it, it doesn't matter because it's an adjustable core. See, what happens is, on, on some of them, it, you, you're going to have a certain amount of DC current flowing through it. So what that does is it pulls the diaphragm down away from the pole piece. Now on some speakers, you don't have adjustment for that and it makes it to where the volume will drop considerably. Whereas on the uh, RCA, you have an adjustment on the, on the uh, driver to where you can set it to where it's, it, it positions the, the core right where it should be, regardless of the DC current. All right, next we will need the power supply. Okay, power supply is homemade power supply here, which are universal power supply that supplies everything you need for these old radios. Okay, this one. Not going. All right, the green. Okay, that's 67. I'm going to put that for our main speaker. Okay, our black wire is the ground common. Okay, that goes here. Okay, and then the gray wire is the filament. Okay, I set that filament to 5 volts. Three, four, five volts. Okay, we put that to A minus. Okay, we're drawing 0.28 amp, which is right, about to, about 100 milliamps per tube. They're 200 milliamps for for the other one. Okay, and then we got a um, Okay, we, we're going to have the red one. I'm going to make the red one the 45. Okay. Yeah. Okay, we'll hook that to here. That's for the detector and the amplifier, the regenerator. Okay, that gets us all of our, our stuff. Okay, we have one more. We have C minus. Okay, doke. I will need another wire. I don't know where it is. We should use another green wire. Okay, C minus will be here. Here. And I'm going to set that to there. Okay. Okay, to A minus and to A plus. Okay. All right, that gets all the power supplies hooked up. Okay, let me go ahead and get around here. That's our uh, volume control. All right, next we'll have to have an antenna and a ground. The power supply here is grounded. Okay. So we don't need anything to the ground lead, but we do need our antenna. Okay. For now, we'll use the long antenna. I've got a long outside antenna, and I've got a short indoor antenna. We'll, we'll get the thing working first with the outside antenna. It gives a lot of signal. Yeah, you get a little scratching there. Oh!
Okay, this thing is a little bit rough to tune. I'm going to go ahead and put a drop of oil on that little spiral. Okay, it works best with no B plus, I mean with no C minus. I'm not really impressed with his performance. I, I can't stop the regeneration even with it at minimum. I'm just adjusting the B plus on here to see if I can find it's something that'll get some more volume on here. but that's about all you can say. <laughs> I'm going to try reversing these two tubes and see if we get any better performance here. I'm going to go put these in the tube tester and see. It looks like one of these might be weak. Okay. This one here is screwed. All right, let's try it with two good ones in here and we'll see what happens. All right, put some good tubes in it, it works okay. All right, that's it. So this sucker works good. 
without having to do anything to it. Wow, okay. So, the panel looks like a mess. We're going to have to work on the panel and work on the box. And that's going to have it working. Didn't have to do any uh, electronic work on it. Okay. Okie dokie. Ooh. I was going to have to, you know, these transformers, oh, it's sad to have to rewind them. So this was wonderful, having them both be good. Okay, it's nice inside. It's good enough inside. But the panel, see, these are a little bit goofed up. We're going to go ahead and polish them up and make them look really good. All right, let's get after it. Okay, <clears throat> to do the front panel, we've got to get the knobs off first because we, we want to get these dials to where we can polish them up. So we're going to have to take the knobs off. To do that, we have to remove... This one's fairly straightforward. There's a set screw, which we loosen. Okay. We'll go ahead and we'll buff the knob up, and that will be ready to go. Okay, that gets us this way. We have a nut here. We take that loose, and then that shaft should pull out of it. Okay, we're going to get it, get the get the condenser itself out of the way. It's going to pop. Okay, now this should. Hmm. I'm not sure how that comes loose. I'm thinking that that might be pressed on there. Okay. What I'm going to do, we'll just have to work on this one on there. I can't figure out how to get that off of there. I think it's pressed into there, and I'm not going to go ahead and unpress it. Okay. We're just going to leave that one on there. We'll have to work on it. On it. Okay, now, this one here we need to get off so we can work on that, on that dial. Okay, it, very simple. It's got a screw right in the back here. All we do is loosen it and it'll pop right off of there. Oops. I don't want to lose that spring out of there. And then this is the uh, Belleville washer. And we'll clean that up. What we're going to do take some, some steel wool and I'm just going to buff these up a little bit to make them look better. I'm not going to do a lot to them, just, just enough to clean the corrosion off of them. See? Actually, I see something here. This is held on by three little bitty screws. this here. Perfection.
Okay, that looks very good. Okay, there's one thing that you do when you're using um, steel wool around the electronics. Get that stuff out of here. That looks very good. Very, very nice. Okay, next. Um, Beautiful. All right, now I'm going to take these. All right, there's a trick to doing these knobs. Use the marks a lot and you just go after it. We're just taking the marks a lot, black marks a lot, blackening that knob up. That takes that kind of crazed look that it has and it turns it ink black. Okay, look at the difference. See, that one's black and that one there's lighter color. So, you know, it just, uh, Blackens them up beautifully. You just kind of finger it up and even it out. That is just gorgeous. That is gorgeous. Really nice. Okay, and then this, we stick back into there. Tighten the screw. That works perfectly. Okay, now take this one, smush it around. This just kind of gives it a little bit of a dull look. It's black as black, but it gets that kind of glaze off of it that makes it look cheap. Okay, now this one, we have a little bit more difficulty here. What I'm going to do, I'm going to get, get a piece of tape. All right, the tape will hold that in. And now, Okay, now when this is all the way here, 
Okay, that should be right over there. Okay, I'm going to loosen the screw a little. Okay, that's perfect. Okay, there's our pick. Ooh, that looks nice. A little place right there. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. That looks beautiful. Okay, that takes care of the front panel. Okay. Next, we have to take the box and um, touch up the box. All right. Uh, the cabinet looks really good. It's got just a little bit of fading and stuff on it. Um, but there's, there's absolutely no damage to it whatsoever. The little feet on the bottom are goofed up, but we got plenty of them. All right, first thing we're going to do, we're going to take lacquer thinner and we're just going to go ahead and clean the whole cabinet. I've just got plain old lacquer thinner and I'm just going to take it and it, it just liquidates the outer surface of the uh, finish and that takes off the craze. Okay, that looks very good. Okay, now we'll let that dry for a few minutes and then we're going to take 220 sandpaper. This is 220 grit and um, I'm just going to take that and I'm going to sand the surface. I'm not taking the finish off, I'm just breaking the glaze. There's one little place here where the finish is thin, it doesn't matter. We'll fix that. I'll show you what we're going to do. The main thing is completely break the glaze. Very good. All right, I'm going to take these. Right, very good. We we're not taking the finish off. We're just going ahead and breaking the glaze. Those are original tags, so I will keep those intact. I'm just going to wipe her down, get all the dust off of it. See on there where the crazing was. 
They're, they're hair fine cracks that form in the old uh, uh, shellac that's on here. And you want to get that off so that when we finish it's going to be just as smooth as glass. Now, to finish off the uh, coloring to make it to where it looks good, we're going to use it's Minwax Special Walnut 224 they call it. It's similar to walnut but not quite as dark as the dark walnut. Uh, we don't need the full darkness because we're not down to bare wood. We're putting it over the existing. And a piece of felt and we're just going to take this and just go over it. And this is just going to, going to stain all of the, the areas where there were the cracks. That looks beautiful. Absolutely just beautiful. Okay. Wow. That's going to be a beautiful radio. Now, we don't have to do the inside. The inside's okay. We're going to leave it the way it is. It's just the outside where we um, sanded it here. Okay. Okay, now, we're going to let that dry overnight, and then we're going to go ahead and spray it with the, um, with the lacquer. Alright, we've got it completely dry. It's been sitting in the sun for about four hours. The, the um, stain is completely dry as a bone, not even sticky at all. We're going to go ahead and coat it with lacquer. See, now this coats these papers with lacquer, too, to preserve them. That locks the fibers in place and keeps them from rotting. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and let that dry for about 10 minutes and then put one more coat on it and that'll do it. Alright, let's go again. Let that dry for a day and that'll be it. 
Okay, now we're going to put it back together. Look at that box. Oh, oh that looks gorgeous. Okie doke. Okay, we've got our hardware. Oh, did that turn out beautiful. Okay, now get the radio. This slips into there. Okay, first, two little itty bitty screws that go down inside. See, the reason this box was so large is that in the old days, the batteries would have been located in the back here. They would have put the batteries inside the box. There it is. Look how beautiful that is. Okay, that is absolutely gorgeous. That's going in my collection. Okie dokie, that's the end of it.